There we go. We're in Matthew, the 20, 20th chapter, verses 20 through 34. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked a favor of him. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Declare that these two sons of mine will sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will indeed drink my cup. But to sit at my right hand and my left, this is not mine to grant but it's for those to whom, for whom it has been prepared by my father. <laughs> when the ten heard it, they were angry with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. He will not be so among you, but whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be the first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. As they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. There were two blind men sitting by the roadside. When they heard that Jesus was passing by, they shouted, Lord, have mercy on us, Son of David. The crowd sternly ordered them to be quiet, but they shouted even more loudly, Have mercy on us, Lord, Son of David. Jesus stood still and called them, saying, what do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, let our eyes be opened. Moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes. Immediately they regained their sight and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be God. You may be seated. The greatest. Man, we like being the greatest, don't we? Come on, don't we like being the greatest? I mean, I went to the greatest school on earth, Duke, right? Amen? Come on. Wow, I, I need a witness. I need a witness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. You, you, you mean all the rest of y'all. You know, we know how that goes. Well, did you hear the passage of Scripture today? Did you listen to it? Did you catch on? Being the greatest is not what we sometimes call the greatest, right? When we say we want the greatest, we want that means top dog, right? Top billing, the one on top, the one with power, the one who's got it made. They're the greatest, right? Not according to the scripture. Now I know that I, we, we say, well, you know, from, you have to have the right attitude when you say this, right? I'm from Texas. <laughs> And sometimes if we go outside the United States, we say, yeah, I'm, you have to do this right too. I'm an American. You guys say, I'm an American, right? I'm an American. And, and, and most of the time, they know it well before we say it, right? Because by God, by God, we're the greatest, right? Greatest country on earth. Yes. 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 Well, do we really want to be the greatest the way Jesus says we're the greatest? Because being the greatest according to Jesus may be different than what we think being the greatest is, right? Come on. Yeah, I got a witness. Yeah. Being the greatest according to Jesus is maybe a little bit different than sometimes our definition. Just like James and John here, they, they kind of messed up, the sons of Zebedee. They, they wanted to be the greatest. They wanted to have Jesus' ear. There, there's a story that, that came out before he died, and, and uh, that was, oh, I just lost the name. I ate that. The guy with the gloves. Michael Jackson. See, I knew you had it. Michael Jackson, when, when he was in Japan, you could buy for $100,000 a minute of FaceTime with Michael Jackson. Who was to sign up for that? Me and I tell you, they were in line. Can you imagine getting Michael Jackson's ear for a hundred grand? That must have been a deal. Do I have a whip? No. No. <laughs> Didn't go anywhere with but, but isn't that what James and John, they wanted Jesus' ear, one on one side, one on the other. They wanted to be ahead of the table. They wanted to be the greatest in the kingdom. They wanted to be what they understood. And I dare say sometimes we understand what it means to be great. Influence, power. Is that what it means to be great? 
Well, let me tell you. I think, as Americans, we are doing some great things right now. 4,000 of our soldiers are going to Liberia. Isn't that great? Do I have a witness? Amen. Yeah. It, is that really what it means to be great? To send 4,000 of our best to go to Liberia to help people, to see that people get healed, to put boots on the ground, to be in harm's way, to share what we really believe about greatness, to serve, to love, to care. I tell you, friends, we need to be in prayer not only for our troops, but for those they're serving, that every single one of those people survive Ebola. That every single one of them is a life brought out of hell by our people. Why? Because that's what makes us great. Amen. 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 That's it. And you know, I think we believe that. I know we believe that, but don't we get caught up in the other way too often? Don't we? We forget what it really means to be great. What it really means to be great is to be a servant. To get out of your own self. This passage sets itself up so well. The first one is our understanding of greatness. James and John wanting to sit at his right and his left. Jesus saying, we can't do that. The next passage is normal, you know, sibling rivalry, right? They all get mad. The other ten get mad because... What are you doing taking that place? I thought that was mine, right? And Jesus putting them in their place like he always does, right? He's saying, no, if you're going to be great, you've got to be a servant. Well, we've covered that part. And isn't it wonderful how Jesus claims that as his job to be the servant? And then immediately, the very first thing that happens out the box is they walk by and two people have a need. And what does Jesus do? He serves. Immediately, he serves. There's a story about Mother Teresa walking through the streets of Calcutta and coming upon a man that was breathing but was unconscious. And how that little woman picked up this sack of bones, really. He was, he was just a skeletal person at that point. Picked him up in her own arms and carried him to her clinic and put him in a bed with clean sheets, white, clean, probably ironed sheets. And he opens his eyes and he looks up at her and he says, am I in heaven? Are you an angel? No. I'm just one of God's servants. And he died. All of that, during that little moment of grace, a human being could get it. Mother Teresa was great. Amen. You know, last night, I picked up on some things. I, at the end of the thing, I, I noticed nobody had to tell anybody what to do. Did you pick up on that last night? Nobody had to tell anybody what to do. Chairs are getting stacked. And I'm so proud of Jonathan. He got it last night. Jonathan's over there stacking chairs right and left. I mean, I was so proud. You know, one of our young ones. Get it. Right? Why? Because he's watching the rest of us stack chairs. Jonathan's stacking chairs. Tables are getting put in place. Trash is getting taken out. Everything is being taken care of. And you know what I did? I stacked a few chairs and went home. Because I had to work this morning. Why was I able to do that? Because I serve a great church. Amen. In Jesus' definition, Jesus' definition. Because we are at our best when we serve. 
All those who, who've had to work for me over the years, pray for them, that had to work for me over the years, know one little piece of advice that I give out, which is amazing. When I saw Scott, the thing he, he reminded me that I reminded him of over and over again was antenna. Antenna. I said, that's right, Scott. Brian knows it. Scott knew it. Jimmy knew it. Get, uh, Gloria knew it. All of them know it. Shay, keep your antenna out. Right? Why, church? Because God has somebody out there God wants you to serve. Keep your antenna out. Notice what's going on. Look around you. Get out of yourself. Great job with the children's sermon, by the way. Wasn't that great? Amen. Amen. God have a witness. Amen. Amen. Brian is teaching me so many wonderful things. <laughs> you know, keep your antenna out, church. Notice, is there somebody that hasn't been paid attention to? Your job, pay attention. Is there somebody that's being left out? Pay attention. Do something about it. Use your hands. Frank, right? Wasn't that awesome this morning? Who would have thought that Frank could do something that clever? <laughs> Man, it was awesome. Poor Pat. <coughs> one that, it was just incredible. That was one of the best stewardship moments I think I've ever experienced. Ever. Wow. Why? Because Frank serves. Right? Frank serves. Keep your antenna out, church. Somewhere, somebody is going to be in a place where God wants you to do something this week. Somebody is going to be in the gutter and needs to be picked up. And there's all kinds of gutters, aren't there? Somebody is going to need you desperately. And if we don't keep our antenna out, if we don't stop and get still like Jesus and say, come on, come on. What can I do for you? What do you want from me? Can you do that, church? Because if we do that, we're the greatest. We're the greatest. I got off the elevator at the Ukraine Hotel. Anybody ever heard of the Ukraine Hotel? It's, a, it's, a, it's in one of the old Stalin buildings in Moscow. I got to go over there and, and we get off the elevator on our floor and, and there's carpet runners on this beautiful parquet floor. And walking off the elevator, we were going to our room and, and there are these women dressed in completely white skirts and blouses and little hats and they're on their knees scrubbing the floor by hand. I guess they haven't heard of Swiffer yet. You know? <laughs> Scrubbing the floor by hand. And as I passed the one that was close to the carpet where we were walking, we didn't dare touch the floor after seeing that, you know. My mama taught me, right? You know. <laughs> I went to this lady and I went, Spasibo. And she looked at me like almost with this look like, what are you, American or something? <laughs> Because nobody, I don't think, had ever thanked her. And that's thank you, Russia. And I butchered it, I'm sure. I did not say it with the right inflection and probably missed a vowel or a consonant in there somewhere. But she knew what I meant. And she looked at me with that quizzical look like, what? And so I said it again. Spasimo. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. And isn't that what we need to do every time we go to the hospital for those people that clean the room? Isn't that what we need to do with the, the nurses and the doctors? But not just the nurses and the doctors, the aides and all the rest who, who do the dirty work of our life. To be truly appreciative of the people that take care of us, of the servants in our life. And then say in the back of our mind, it's not Bill Gates I want to be like. He's a nice guy. I like him and everything, all right? Don't go there. But, but maybe 
that aid that comes in with a smile and a joke and brightens up her day. And that's who I want to be when I grow up. You get it? That's who I want to be when I grow up. Because when she comes in or he comes in, they're the greatest. They are the greatest. Church, Jesus wants us to know the joy of life comes when somebody looks at you or looks at me and says, Am I in heaven? Am I in heaven? Are you an angel? Would that like make your whole life? If somebody was to say that to you, I hope they do someday. I hope they do because that means you're right where you need to be. Right where you need to be. Now here's the truth, church. People ask me what heaven's going to be like, and I say, oh, I don't know. I have no clue. I just know that if I wake up and I'm not smelling smoke, I'm going to go, Whew. <laughs> That's it right there. And if I have to have the Hubble Space Telescope to see the other end of the table where Jesus is, I will at least be at the table. <laughs> right? If I just give a place, don't you know there's somebody out there that you're going to see this week that doesn't think they have a place? Hmm. You have power. You have power. You have the ability to pick somebody up spiritually. You have the power to grace them into the kingdom. You have the power to let somebody know there is a place at the Lord's table for you. Are you an angel? Am I in heaven? Well, if they come here, I pray that they will. They'll be close. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Gracious Lord, we like to give thanks for Mother Teresa because she did it so well, but we forget that you call on us to be just like her. Help us to be grateful for her example and then live it out. Help us realize that greatness really comes when we get out of ourselves and into your spirit and into the needs and the lives of someone else. Lord, thank you. Spasima. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.